Coach, obviously you guys were without a pretty big arm uh, over in Omaha this week. How is Ryan yeah. Kraft doing? What's his status? Actually, really good. Um, and I can say that with a straight face. Uh, so he, he's uh, through the last couple of days, supposed to throw a bullpen today. I talked to him last night. Said he felt really good. Um, so just kind of some heads and forearm tightness that flared up on him there at Michigan State. And, you know, I even talked to the umpire after the game. He's a good umpire. He's like, you could just tell he wasn't right. And so we got him out of there as fast as we, talked about, got him out as fast as we could and didn't want to push it this weekend. But has thrown for the last two or three days. He's supposed to throw a bullpen today. And um, it would be a, a big shot in the arm for our bullpen. No, no pun intended. But it would be, be a nice. You know, we've just we kind of, we've kind of run the same the same kind of system there, changing looks all year. And, and obviously, any time you, you change that, it's going to make it a little bit harder. But having him back would be big. But we, we won't push him. He obviously has a long career. But if he's healthy, we'd like to get, get him back out there. What's the key to, to having a nice long run here now? What, what needs to happen? Well, you've, you've just got to be able to play fundamentally. And, and as cliche as that sounds, it, it just is the reality. You, you can't give away base runners. You can't give a, you can't walk guys. You can't put free bases on. You, you can't make errors. You've you got to take care of the ball. You have to play the way that we've played for the majority of the year. And you know, we've given up a few more runs here recently. And, and just, you know, the tweener plays, right, where it's like, when do I put the ball in my pocket? You know, the, the, the bunt there in the, with, uh, with Iowa there where we, we throw the ball away. Probably just a bunt to put in your pocket. Like those kind of plays. You have to play clean baseball. And then you, you have to, you have to, from an offensive standpoint, um, you have to do like what we did against Iowa with, against the Brett kid, where you have to extend a bat. You have to extend outings. You have to force somebody into their bullpen. You have to be really willing to, to, to work. Um, I understand the payoff is usually later in the tournament when you start to get to that second, third, fourth game um, where you can really start to capitalize in, in, in big moments like that. So the tournaments aren't necessarily won in the first game. They, they, can, they can put you behind the eight ball a little bit. But if you want if to make a really good run, you, you offensively have to really lean on opposing arms, and then you have to play clean as, as best as you can. And, and when you play clean, that allows you to really extend your pitching. And so... Um, but it all revolves around kind of those those basic elements for for everybody, but it will be for us as well, especially. Okay. So what was your reaction to seeing uh, Indiana pop up on the screen first time since 2019? It was it was I was just really excited for the guys, where you know that for them it's for the most most of the guys this is their first time going, and so you're trying to so for so long you're trying to explain to the guys, you know what it's like and the process and what you have to do to be able to go through it and. You know, essentially last year we kind of started with a whole new group and now growing those guys up. And so to, to have them to be able to now experience it and see it and, and to, to, uh, to know the satisfaction that that brings. As I went as a player and I know how hard you work to get there and now to have the satisfaction of getting to go do it yourself, um, it's, it's, just, it's just very rewarding. It was a lot of fun just to watch their excitement and hear their voices. And, um, and now they get to go. <laughs> My daughter's over there coughing. But... Uh, um, you know, now, now they get to go do it themselves, which will be which will be a lot of fun for them. And then, what, what I get excited about as a coach now is they get to go experience it firsthand. And you're going to get to go into a big environment, and play really good baseball, and you know you're going to have a chance to go compete for a national championship. But it also, in the moderate to long term, now is like there's there's so much that's gained from being able to go and experience that at the next level. So. I guess, you know, I, I kind of talked to Philip Glasser at the end there for a second. I said he was a guy that I was probably the most excited to see his reaction. He's, he came back, he turned down professional baseball to come back and, and to really be the kind of the leader of the group and to be the face of it. And, I um, mean, you know, he spent three years at Youngstown State and then he came here and had to go through that. So, he's, you know, it's his first winning season. It's the first time to get to go and play in the postseason. So I kind of joked with him. I said, how does it feel to actually have it? He said, you know, the first thing I thought about was, you know, the freshmen that this is their first year of college and it's like, oh, this is easy automatic bid. We get to, <laughs> you know, we get to go over. This is every year thing and how hard it was to go through that whole process to get there. So I was, I was excited for them. And um, just the, the kind of the culmination of a lot of work, right? You know, during COVID, during the shutdown, you're, you're recruiting, you know, Devin Taylor and Reisdorf and Foley, all these young guys in math, all these young guys, you're recruiting all these guys. Um, and now to see them on the field going out and having success has, has been a lot of fun. There was a lot of talk last year about uh, the Big Ten being down um, yeah. and about Rutgers not getting a bid. Um, this year, you, know, you, you didn't. There was not a stolen bid in the in the tournament. Yeah. Um, and you end up getting three as a league. Yeah. Yeah. So, what does that mean for the league going forward? Well, you, you hit the you hit the nail there on the head with with just the growth of the league. I think coming out of COVID, coming out of those things, you're starting to see the league rebound. You're seeing the 
the, just the, the depth of the quality teams within the league and then the height of the, the best teams where I think I read somewhere it was maybe the first time in 20 or 30 years where they've had you have three teams with 40 plus wins going into uh, postseason play and, and you had even there you know going into the last few weeks you know Rutgers wasn't you know terribly far out of the picture and and some of those teams so you're starting to get back to where you're three and four and five teams and that's where it's been in before and that's where it should be at in, in, in getting back there I think kind of the natural order of things is returning to balance, right? Where you're able to recruit, you have like the back back to having the, the, the full seasons, you're able to go and do the things um, that typically allow you to go and have success. And so it, it is very exciting to see the league back to three teams and, and you had their chance to maybe have a fourth with about a month left or so, maybe a fourth could have snuck in. So, and then moving forward, we just, we have to continue to do the things that we need to do from a recruiting standpoint, from an investment standpoint, um, ac across the conference to be able to push us to a four and a five bid league, which is where it needs to be at. You, there's a lot of familiarity with this region. You've played two or three teams, and more importantly, probably played at the field. Yeah. It's close to home. What does kind of all of the importance of that mean? Um, I, I, I think the travel component is is probably the, the most beneficial. Every team you play is, is going to be a good team. and. But not having to travel, you can hop on a bus and, and we could practice here in the morning and be there in the afternoon. I remember when I was at Wright State and, and we went to Stanford, right? And you got to pack all those guys up and go across the country. And that's just really hard after a 60 game season. And so, I, I, you know, the travel component is really nice for us. I think familiarity is good. You know, we, we obviously have played, we played Kentucky, you know, each of the last two years and we've played Ball State twice this year. So that's good. Um, Tyler Dones. Tyler Dones was a graduate transfer from West Virginia, so I'm sure Coach Simmons is already on the phone with, with TD asking, uh, you know, getting any any tips from him. So um, all all those things are good, uh, but I think that just the wear and tear, the, the travel component would be really nice for us. You you as opposed to the end of the season in the tournament, you deployed Braden Reisdorf out of the bullpen. Yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts at this point about how he might be utilized in a regional situation? A, a ton of it depends on craft. I would say a ton of it depends on craft. If I had to bet, I would say probably as a starter. Um, but I also know we will go into that Friday game with kind of all hands on deck to, to win the Friday game. Um, with craft being down, we kind of thought to have uh, he threw after Bothwell, correct? It was like after Bothwell. So if we went left to right, it would give, just with Reisdorf having thrown so many times in the last two weeks, and, and, and you know, when he's good, he's 92, 96, and he's probably not gonna be 92, 96 at the end of a long week. So we thought after Bothwell may give him a little bit of length, and, and uh, yeah. but having Kraft back will help a ton with how we use him. If I had to bet today, I would say probably he would be like lightly penciled in to be a game two starter. Um, but if we have to have him to finish game one, we would use him. Would you probably throw Luke game one then? Yeah, I would imagine we'll throw uh, Sonar game one um, and then kind of all hands on deck and then try to hold a guy for game two. But if we can't, we, we, we won't. Having him thrown 117 pitches last Thursday, then is there any sort of, with the extra rest, there shouldn't be any issue with that, correct? Shouldn't be any issue, yeah.